Hi there, and thank you for joining me today. My name is Jan, and I'm from iheartcards2.blogspot.com. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the U.S., and in this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make the Irresistible Blooms Bath Bomb Box. The products I've used in this project will be listed below this video. Just click on the Show More Boards and you'll see them there. I'll be using the small flower and the triple leaf stamps from the Irresistible Bloom stamp set. The designer series paper that I'm using is called the Hello Irresistible 6 inch by 6 inch designer series paper. I'm using the two sheets pictured here to create the flowers and the leaves. I'll also be using a 2 and 1 8 inch circle die from the Layering Circles Framelits. This is a retired set. I'll also be using another retired die from the Stitch Shapes Framelits. The two inks that I've used are Bursamark and Pretty Peacock ink. I've stamped the leaves with the Pretty Peacock ink. We need three sets of these leaves. You need to use an embossing buddy on the paper for the flowers. This releases the static electricity and keeps the powder where you want it. I need to stamp six of these flowers and I do these two at a time just to make sure the ink doesn't dry it out before I use the heat tool. I've die cut the flowers and leaves with the coordinating Irresistible Blooms dies. Now I'm going to fussy cut my flowers, well, three of them, and the only thing I'm cutting away is the outer petals. This will leave the little inner flower intact. I'm using a bone folder to curl the flowers and the leaves up just a little bit so that it gives them some dimension. I've cut the designer series paper for the decoration on the box top. I have a square that's been cut into a stitch square and four strips. These have all been adhere to the flirty flamingo mats with liquid glue or if you choose stamp and seal. The basic white box bomb insert is a five and three quarters by five and three quarters square. Here I'm scoring all the lines, the fold lines for this insert and I'll be cutting the two and one eighth inch circle. I'm burnishing all my fold lines with the bone folder on all four sides. Now I'm going to use my scissors to cut away all the unnecessary bits to make this insert work. I do this on opposite sides. Um, you can see that I'm cutting up to the second score line, mitering my corners, cutting away the excess, and then going back in and mitering the corners on my glue tabs. Now I'm turning it around to do exactly the same thing as I did on the front side.
I'm adding tear and tape adhesive to all four of the sides of the box. This is done on the inside, well it's not the box, it's the insert. And I'm using my ruler to take and tear it. This way I know I've got adhesive all the way to the edge. Now I'm going to turn the insert over and add multi-purpose liquid glue to the glue tabs and making sure that my corners are nice and squared. I'll also take and use a bone folder to make sure that the glue tabs are sealed down well. Using my take your pick tool, I'm going to be peeling back the adhesive cover on the tear and tape and sealing down the sides of the insert so that to finish off the insert part of this project. Moving on to the box bottom, this is 8 and 3 8 by 8 and 3 8 scored at 1 half inch and 2 and 3 quarters. And of course it's pretty peacock cardstock. Once I've scored all of these, I'm going to begin the same cutting process that I did on the insert. They're very similar. You're going to score all the way around on the two measurements and then start cutting up to the second score line. I'm making marks on either side just to remind myself that I do need to reverse it all the way to the other side. Now that I've finished the first side, I'm going to repeat the process on the opposite side, just as I said before. If you'll notice, when I get through cutting away the excess bits, I am not mitering the glue tabs. That's because I'm going to take my paper trimmer and cut away the excess on this. Using the paper trimmer makes it a very neat and clean cut. Now I'm bringing in the paper trimmer and I'm going to fold the side in and I'm going to trim away 7 eighths of an inch on these glue tabs. See how quick that was? I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. After I've done that, then I will take and miter those glue tabs, or wedge them, however you want to say it, uh, before we start gluing everything together. You can see I've added the tear and tape on the inside, and now I'm going to start adding the glue to put this box together, box bottom together. Now I'm taking and putting the corners together. I can't say this enough. You really need to make sure that your corners are squared up nicely. Or otherwise, when you put your insert in, it won't fit. Or if you put your box top on, it's not going to fit either. So just be patient and take a little time. 
to take and make sure that your corners are nice and squared. Once again, we're using the take a pick tool to take and remove the outer cover on the tear and tape adhesive. And starting with your sides that have the glue tabs in, I took and folded uh, the reinforced edge down into the box and that just makes a really nice finished edge on your box. I'm adding the insert into the box bottom to make sure that it fits well. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my bath bomb inside of it too. The basic white box top is 6 and 15 sixteenths by 6 and 15 sixteenths. It's scored at one and two inches on all sides, which will give you a one inch border. This is going to make the box top just a tiny bit larger than the box bottom. Now I am folding on the score lines and burnishing with the bone folder. I'll be trimming away the excess just as I have in the last two pieces of this project. Again, I've marked it to remind myself where I'm cutting and I'm cutting up to the second line. I'll be cutting away here on this corner and the excess on the glue tab, then coming around and cutting on the other corner and each time I have wedged that side and once I get done here I'll go ahead and wedge cut the sides here as well as on the glue tabs on this side. turned it around and am cutting up to the second score line on that opposite side of the top. Once again, wedging the side as I'm cutting away the excess cardstock. I've already added the tear and tape to the inside of the box top and here I'm starting to add the glue, liquid glue, to the glue tab so that I can begin assembling the top of the box. Once again, making sure that those corners are squared up really well.
using my Take Your Pick tool to remove the cover on the tear and tape. Again, sealing down the sides uh, that have been glued together first. And then once I've gone all the way around the box, I'll use a bone folder to make sure that those edges are sealed down nicely. Now I'm going to add the trim pieces to the box top sides. Again, I use liquid glue for this just because I need to be able to wiggle it into place. Doesn't need a lot, but I need to make sure that my corners are going to be sealed down really nice. going to adhere the matted stitch shaped square onto the top of the box top. And now that that's completed, it's time to decorate. I'm adhering the flowers, the inner flower to the outer flower together with mini glue dots using my take your pick tool to position them. You can take and line the inner flower up exactly with the outer flower the way that it would be if it hadn't been cut apart and it gives a very nice look. I've added many dimensionals to the back of the flowers so that when I place them on the box top. It's going to give them a little bit of height so I can take and place the leaf clusters underneath them. I'm adding mini glue dots to the back bottom of the leaf clusters. And then I will go ahead and place them actually tucking them in underneath the flowers, just placing them so that I like them. I've cut 24 inches of the 3 8 inch soft succulent open weave ribbon. This also has recently retired, but I still had some of it and decided it would look just wonderful with this project and tied a bow around the box top. I've used the loose frosted dots actually the flirty flamingo ones, to accent the flower centers on my box. So I placed three of the largest dots in those centers to take an embellish and finish off this project.
irresistible blooms class in the mail include six card kits two each of three designs and one bath bomb gift box if you are in the united states and need a demonstrator then you can order your supplies in my online store by clicking on the link provided below if you are interested in earning a discount on your Stampin' Up! purchases, I'd love to have you join my team. And you can purchase the starter kit by clicking on that link, which you will also find listed below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. If you click on the little bell, you will receive notifications when I post any new content. Thank you for sharing this time with me. See you soon. Thank you.